recorded, so you can check that out later on as well or share it with other people. Um, we do have a QA and a box. We'll be around for the entire time in case you want to uh, ask questions. We, we, we uh, love your questions, so please feel free to utilize that as you, as you see fit. Um, and uh, with no further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, some examples, uh, give you some, some sense of uh, some of the projects we've done recently um, and how they, how they differ and, and, and uh, then be able to relate back to those as we talk about some of the things that uh, um, went well or didn't go well uh, with those projects and uh, how we would give you advice for going into your project. Um, the, the, uh, uh, we'll talk about whether the sales force really needs iPads or tablets. We'll talk about total, total cost of ownership and coming up with a business model for whatever you're going to be doing. Uh, that's always it's always something that we, we end up considering at some point. Um, we'll talk about building the package, all the things you need to, to put together to, to make it really work. Um, and then technologies, and then uh, we'll go into detail on rolling out the tablets uh, themselves, whether they're iPads or whatever. Uh, so first of all, a few things about Vox Mobile. First off, we've been, we've been around doing enterprise mobility for about as long as it's been enterprise mobility. Uh, well over 600 clients across uh, North America, many uh, with international operations. Uh, very lucky this past year to have been recognized by Gartner as number two in the world for product viability in the manageability space. Uh, and uh, that's mostly because of our focus, and uh, as you'll see here, most of the other people that they consider uh, capable in this space uh, have other things that they work on as well. So uh, it's our focus and our, really our, our, our agility in the market that people uh, uh, really like about us. So you know, one of the things that Gardner has been talking about recently is this nexus of forces. We're bringing together the, uh, social as, as, a, as a communication style and also as a set of applications. Um, big data, uh, you know, big information, the fact that everything is generating information at this point and they're, and they're capturing it, quite often capturing it in the cloud, as we, also many of our applications uh, are and uh, storage is, and, uh, and we're mobile. But, you know, we're increasingly consuming uh, all that, those applications and that big data from a, from a mobile device. So as part of that, we, um, uh, you know, we see the, this, these tablet rollouts as part of that. And, and it's a confusing new world. So one of the things we're doing with our clients is developing this, this enterprise mobility blueprint, this way of stepping between where we are now and, and where they need to be to really be able to do a good job of taking advantage of those four, uh, those four forces um, and use them as part of the, their solution uh, creation. Uh, so, and it's our, our, our box track consulting offering that really uh, brings together a lot of the information for today's uh, uh, presentation comes out of uh, work we've done uh, consulting for other clients and many other solutions for them. So, so let's talk about a couple of these of these examples here. First of all, there's one here that there was 900 iPads that we're rolling out. Um, it was uh, they wanted to roll out both a Salesforce implementation, Salesforce.com. And also a custom doc management solution because they really wanted to change the way they were managing uh, the presentation materials and the contract materials that, that, that Salesforce was using, and having better visibility into who was using what and when. Uh, they were they had uh, the top sales professionals from four different countries. Uh, actually, I think uh, in the end it ended up being ten different countries. But the, when we first started talking about it, it was, it was only four. And they had multiple reasons for doing this. They they were hoping to uh, offer a smoother presentation style, so that you know you walk in with your iPad. You, it, it could boots right up, and you can, you can step right through the through, through the uh, uh, presentation in front of a because you're usually selling to only one person, as it turns out, or a couple of people. Maybe it was projected, but usually it was it was a smaller audience. Um, they uh, wanted to change the, their sales operations, so they're collecting more data around things that went on, and uh, they wanted to do a lot more with document management, and they really wanted to change a lot of behaviors around the sales force. So they were they were looping together the change in the uh, in the hardware. And also the software uh, to also to get to that change. So changing a lot of things at once towards getting uh, to that real a different approach to, to the sales process. Uh, and they're still in this process, by the way, uh, uh, ro rolling this out and trying to implement all these things. But uh, meeting with some successes already. Another one that we that we've done recently is Android rollout. There's 350 tablets. Uh, um, they had over a dozen apps on there, uh, and I'll show you a list of these a little later on. It really uh, there was nothing custom about this. This was really about buying things off the shelf and putting them together to solve the, 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 the tasks of the, uh, the folks that they had working in, in, uh, in, in this very mobile sense uh, in, in the very uh, salespeople. And they had mobile deployment segments, so uh, they didn't just do one at a time. They, 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 laid, they layered it out over a number, a number of segments. Uh, we'll talk about segments here in a second. And uh, 
they took advantage of the a sales meeting uh, to do both the deployment, so giving the devices out to people, and also doing the training uh, at that. And that's something that we talk about this time of year because uh, quite often those sales meetings, the big ones, are, are in January, February. So uh, a lot of the folks that are, that are on this call, for instance, I, I know are preparing for those kinds of meetings, those uh, uh, you know, year beginning sales invigoration meetings, and uh, and it's really where uh, people are most likely to uh, uh, to face uh, have the opportunity to train. So I understand that the audio is a little choppy. Go so to we're going to mode here. Go to another mode here. here. Apologies. And then this last one we'll talk about is something called uh, mobilize the branch managers. So this was uh, uh, mobilized an, an instance where there were so people uh, who were managing branches. Uh, they were also salespeople. It was like half their job. They were when, when they were being salespeople, they were exquisitely mobile. Everything they had to do as a salesperson, they had to do while they're mobile. Uh, and they had a lot of varying work styles across the people around the country that were doing this kind of work. Um, and they had very much varying coverage as well. They had some people in very urbanized very areas. Some people well. really working out in, areas. by their own words, the sticks. Um, and uh, and as such, uh, had, had, um, they and couldn't guarantee such, what kind of coverage they were going to have. Um, they currently operate a number of virtualized they applications. That's how they're implementing their, their current application set um, you know, for their laptops and desktops. Um, and they had a lot of paper forms still in their process. Um, and they um, and, and, but they, and maybe what the biggest um, driver was a really they, poor visibility the into what people were doing and, and, and for how much. And once again, to that varying work style scenario, they weren't really sure what people were doing and to what, and to what extent. So uh, there was, they were hoping to, to, to learn a little more about that. So you see, there's three very different types of so uh, Salesforce rollouts that we've done, uh, but all of them with the idea that I think tablets are going to be but part of the solution uh, here, and they're going to make things better. No, so let's go back through and, and talk a little bit about uh, how, so how we end up getting them to that, that place, both by helping to design the solution and also rolling them out. You know, so for a lot of folks already, you know, we see this as an extraordinary change. They've gone from a place where, hey, our tablets really work devices, or are they just for, for watching movies at home, to a place where people are really moving to them as their sole device. So maybe you're already sold on that. Um, and it's really because, just like the Nexus of Forces, there's a number of things changing all at once. The, the software is getting better, you know, the application themselves, the, the uh, operating system are getting better, and the devices are getting better, and the people, the users, users, are becoming more sophisticated, more able to take advantage of these, these touch screen interfaces. And all those things together are leading to a place where we're able to do a lot more of the things we used to think we need a keyboard for, uh, just by touching and, and, and using the onboard key, keyboard. So, the big question is that a lot of these, these folks were facing as they were the going into these solutions these were, um, you know, can they, really the on a, on a um, can they really get their job done on a tablet? Can they really get their job done? And what's more, can they get it done better on a tablet? Yeah, is it, maybe this is the best better. device for, for doing these things. Maybe this is um, the best what, device. What's this going to do from a cost perspective? Um, what, what's and this do um, cost what am I going to have to change to be able to support and, these things? So um, what, what what is my organization really built yet to be able to support a workforce really relying on this consumer soft hardware, really? So, I mean, towards answering that question, we, we so, sometimes rely on question, some older work that Gardner did on segmentation. Uh, and that's segmentation of workers, but segmentation of work style, which sometimes aligns to, align to workers, but it's really about uh, understanding the kinds of work that people are doing with their uh, tablets, and therefore, um, or, or in general, uh, in deciding whether that's appropriate for tablets or not. You, know, you see, folks working on, on things where, they, where, they, where they they're just talking about alert, or they're doing very quick email messages, or they're filling out forms, these are great places for tablets. Um, and it's really clear that maybe even it's a better um, interface really than the laptop because you can really carry it around. It's much more portable than a laptop. You don't have to find a place to set it down or, or uh, worry about dropping it. It's really made to be carried around, and uh, uh, and as such, these are these are styles. If you put them together, describe a lot of the jobs, it turns out, in, in most organizations. Um, but this is, a, once again, a 2006 estimate. But you can see here, there was, you know, bring together those, those people who may have a good solution fit within tablets with an awful lot of the, of the U.S. workforce. And what we've seen mostly, of course, is people and taking advantage of tablets for the sales force and for the field force. And so maybe you've already sold on this. That's why you're here talking so about the fact that for the sales force, these are light devices, they have that instant on. 
off uh, capability. Um, they're really made for being uh, integrated with the cloud uh, or for, for local integration. So you have both the, you know, the, you know, all the different types of wireless you could possibly imagine. Um, and they're really well connected to things that are naturally part of the sales process. We're talking about e-commerce or CRM. Uh, most commonly, we're talking about, you know, of course, like a Salesforce.com kind of kind of implementation. And if all those things together make once again give us a really good sense that Salesforce might be a good candidate for for tablet. When we go to the next step, thinking about the, the financial impact we go to the next of it, step, thinking about we find that uh, you know, the, when you bring everything together, uh, and here is a, is a list of things that I, I put together for you. This is for uh, an analysis we did for, for one customer. Uh, but you can kind of uh, adjust the numbers to your own, to your own liking. You can see here that, that, that uh, the ThinkPad itself ended up being uh, a little bit more expensive than a smartphone. But the tablet by itself was, was easily the, the least expensive of all these devices. And we're not talking about a cheap one. This is a, that iPad uh, 4G with 32 gigabyte of, by, uh, of RAM. And, um, and you, you really add in all the total cost of ownership over a, over a two year period. It's like, oh, that's, that's a pretty reasonable number. Uh, it's, it's really quite uh, digestible. And maybe I want to start thinking about, maybe it's worth it to think about the tablet as a replacement to that laptop and then have a total, a total cost of, of supporting that mobile workforce uh, even lower. And I'll show you here in a minute how you can even maybe cut out the smartphone. I'll show you here in a minute how you can even cut out the And here, just, just for... Uh, 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 and here, just just for uh, mathematical uh, sake, I, I've given you the kind of the breakdown of how we got sake, some of these numbers the, around the support yeah, costs, because um, those are things that are important to, to figure out as you're, you're putting together what the package is going to cost you. Uh, when the, when uh, you get the, that call from the CIO saying we're going to roll out the tablet, we will get it all figured out, figuring out how it's going to impact you and which other things you have to go go do to to uh, um, affect that are certainly something you have to consider. And it's things like how long it takes to fix something, what are the ways they break, and, and uh, how often do they break. And uh, understanding the um, uh, understanding uh, all the costs associated with that. All, all right, so I figured out who my who my segments right, are, so who needs things, and, and then Salesforce is a good are, fit there. Uh, I looked at the, at the financials, and sure enough, it looks like maybe there's a good fit there. Now we got to figure out whether they actually get the work done, right? So this is one of the analysis we've done uh, for one client, uh, and looking at not only the type of work they were doing, right? We're looking at the, where they're working, at their desk, where they're, when they're really mobile. You know, in this instance, meaning uh, not at any particular workstation. So there was a place where they almost always have to have. Uh, uh, 3G or 4G connectivity on a client site where they may or may not have Wi-Fi, and then on the airplane. Um, and this is an average across the, across the uh, uh, the workforce. Now we end up getting, by the way, by uh, doing some uh, mapping of what they're supposed to be doing, and then actually interviewing folks and uh, taking some surveys to find out what 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 goes on and kind of rationalizing those too. But you can see here different types of applications and tabs and how important the, 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 that the Likert scale zero through five is all about. You know how critical is it to have Salesforce when you're at your desk? Absolutely critical. That's a five. Um, how important is it to have signature capture when you're desk? Zero. Don't need it. No one comes by my desk and and uh, to sign documents uh, to sign off on the PO. So you can see here, um, you know, an analysis of that towards going out and building that solution, determining how mobile they are, uh, and and what that looks like from the from their uh, so a, a capability standpoint when they're in these various mobile solutions uh, environments. And so we we know now we know what kind of applications so we, we need, we know, know what kind of tasks we, we need. Kind of now how are we going to, you know, if we're, we're going to try to build a solution around that, what are my options? You know, for a lot of these uh, these, these installations you know, we've done so far, these, they almost always include some OEM apps. Far, you know, that's uh, like the front for Salesforce, uh, a very popular one. You've got the Salesforce back end. Citrix or some other kinds of virtualization, also very popular for these things. The great thing about that is it's very easy to turn on if you've already got the It's very easy to add it to a to, uh, to tablets, um, very inexpensive, really overall to deploy, very easy to manage. There's no data problems there. It's very secure. It doesn't work when you're not connected. <laughs> That's the only real problem there. So you have to think about when you're mobile, how connected are you? Remember that, that, that use case I talked about where they they didn't have good connectivity. And they had, to have, they had a lot of virtualization in there. So one of the things we did when we ran their, their, their proof of concept is how bad was the connectivity in a lot of these places where they needed a virtualized app uh, to come up with a solution of whether or not that was going to work for them. And then we have kind of a three layers here, three three tiers of uh, app development that go into helping to mobilize applications or tasks. 
interface development, that's where you're really developing simple interface interfaces development. that maybe that's are really HTML5, uh, may, maybe they're, they're native apps, but that doesn't really matter. Where it's really, I'm not doing a lot around the, the device, taking advantage of the device, except for the fact that it's a touch screen interface. I'm uh, presenting some information, capturing some new information, and pushing it back. Uh, to, uh, to, a, to a back-end server versus uh, the more rich application uh, development. Where we can, I have an antenna as an example of how you might pull that together, uh, where you really take advantage more of the, of the interface. And it tends to happen more when you're doing a rollout that where you know uh, the devices you're going to be putting them out on and, and it's, it's going to be really locked down versus enabling it for a lot of different types of devices. And the last one there, I use SafeLight uh, as there, an example there, where you really go through a mobile uh, transformation, where you're changing yeah, work you as much as you change the application set. You're, you're, you're kind of renegotiating how work gets done to be able to accommodate being more efficient and effective while you're mobile. Um, and uh, we've seen plenty of that in smaller and, uh, steps than what we'll SafeLight did. I mean, SafeLight actually took their storefront the locations and put them in trucks and had them start store driving store around. Store Huge store transformation in their business. But you can, in much smaller ways, say, okay, well, right now you're doing that. What if we did it in a different way? And one of our, our examples at the, at the top end was all about that because they said, hey, you shouldn't be creating your own PowerPoint, right? You should be running with the PowerPoint we give you. So we're not going to give you PowerPoint anymore to display stuff. We're going to give you uh, this HTML5 interface that lets you pull presentations from our back end and present them to people and give you touch interfaces uh, to, to look at so they can swipe through things and whatnot. But it also gets great stats as to where you are in the presentation, who you showed it to and when, and all that kind of stuff, uh, which is great for the marketing department to have. So now they know who's being shown what and how effective it's going to be. So and the next step beyond that, so I've, I captured what so my, what my steps look like that, so and how important they are in these various contexts. Like and now I'm going to come back with some solutions, right? Uh, I, I have some Citrix options, options on here uh, for that workforce right, management Citrix part. I also have some apps that I could, I could outline. Uh, I've got a couple different ways of getting to back-end information here, whether it's through uh, uh, Copian, which is an OEM interface for your, for your file shares and your, and your uh, SharePoint. Um, I annotate was a way that this, this, this client was looking at maybe doing, uh, getting signatures. They had that and DocuSign, Evernote for taking notes. So they, they had to, they really outlined how uh, effective any of those things were going to be really when they broke down the work even further. So not just saying, hey, I need, I need Word or I need PowerPoint, but looking at that layer down below that saying, which of these things is a good job of, of recording, recording a, a document discrepancy? And who, who's going to allow me to do that? Who's going to give me access to technical support in the back end? And, uh, and, and, show, and showing which of these things really did well in that, in that, in that perspective. So this all comes out of testing, that, that point, that uh, proof of concept testing that you want to do as part of your process. And when you go around picking those OEM apps, which is almost always and part of the solution. Those OEM Keep in mind that there's a difference between the consumer apps, because there are lots of them out there, and the business apps that we would probably suggest to you. Uh, you know, with business apps, we're, we're, you know, we're quite used to the idea that they're connecting back to enterprise systems, that we have uh, enterprise level accounts and auditability into those things and, and be able to you know, control access based on role, uh, maybe being able to do some analytics against how people are using them. These are all things people are using quite a bit these days that are not necessarily part of the consumer apps will find part. out there. So part of what you're going to be doing so is probably part of what you're you know, be doing talking with folks about what kind of apps they currently use and determining whether those are really consumer apps or whether they can make, be made into business apps um, and be uh, become part of your infrastructure in some way, whether they uh, connect to, to cloud services or connect to your back end. Now, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, so once I've got, I've got my, uh, uh, so once I've got, I've got my, uh, my roles breaken down, my work broken down, and, and break no kind of a, get a sense of my what my solution might look like. Now I'm going to try to put some real numbers against all of that. And here's there's a lot of hard costs and returns that I, that I can outline with these. And these are the ones people most commonly put together when they're actually getting down to the business case. Um, and and the, and the thing is, some of these things seem and, and, like they're and, and like they're soft. But if we've gotten like with more mature soft, IT organizations and more mature organizations in general, they know there's an actual value to uh, work work quantity. Uh, you know, the number of things you can get done a day. Um, you know, level of sales being increased because you you actually able to execute more sales. 
um, maybe shifting CapEx to OpEx. These are really hard things to put numbers against. Um, maybe you don't know them, but, but someone probably knows they should uh, But we also suggest that, that you put some numbers against these things that are softer, maybe harder to quanti uh, quantify, uh, like efficiency and downtime, because we know these things aren't zero. You know, I did a lot of business case development back in the day when we were first talking about, hey, wouldn't it be great to have your email in your pocket, this new thing called BlackBerry? It doesn't make sense to you to give Blackberries to your workers. And people try to come up with these, uh, yeah, but what's the hard return going to be on giving everyone access to their email? And we said, well, responsiveness and, and uh, uh, how much work you get out of them. And it's like, ah, those are all soft costs. But we, now we know that even though they're soft costs, they really do have value to them. So coming up with something, even if it's even precise, something that actually speaks to the value of those things is really important uh, towards doing a good job of understanding a business model. Now, here's an example of a business model we put together, a very simplified version of it, from one client uh, who was doing, uh, in this case, it was an Android rollout, and they were looking at the possibility of doing BYOD. Uh, they wanted to say, hey, maybe, maybe we can do this as a BYOD thing and help everyone buy their own Android uh, tablets, and, uh, and and we'll see what happens there. And then when we looked at all, it all through, and kept Captured even the most basic parts of the cost structures here, and did one thing, one thing that was kind of soft. What's the productivity gain that we think we're getting out of having this application run within this working group? And they had some thoughts about, you know, how, you know, how often they use it, and uh, you know, how much of the time is, is it used by, and how much more efficient does it make them over the old paper form they were using? And then they multiplied that out times uh, the average salary over two years. You can see uh, the productivity gain they were getting from the solution was twenty thousand. Dollars, which is 867 percent of the entire cost of everything that was else was supporting that solution. So what they came up with was understanding so that they didn't, they, they couldn't afford to have anybody have any have downtime any more than, than they required. So they kind of backed off their BYOD plan here. So they knew they wanted to keep people running and active. And there are things that happen in BYOD that don't happen in your, in your commercial deployment, like where. Somebody loses a device and can't afford to replace Somebody it. By the way, device, you know you, you can deal with people that uh, are you can aren't deal particularly with good at. Uh, uh, protecting their, their hardware, uh, but you want to keep them uh, effective in the field, regardless. Uh, to get, you know, so you don't uh, double down on how bad things are. And this is one, you know, one way of getting to make sure you're you're putting the right emphasis on the right thing. Now, all right, the, the value in the apps. And here's, here's one, a couple of the apps, uh, the app uh, deployments we've done recently. I just want to give you some examples. So here's an, here's one where where it's a mixture of paid for apps, OEM apps, and then some apps that we may have normally. Considered considered uh, consumer apps, but they found uh, a very real business use for them. Uh, now, Quick Office Pro, now owned by Google, but that's a, that's a very common one for people that really still think they need to use Office when they're mobile. Uh, SharePoint client, uh, uh, for the print cloud, you know, the ch chatter for Salesforce, Salesforce.com widget. This is an Android solution. Uh, the most interesting one here, I think, is probably the weather uh, channel. The reason they, they chose that is part of this. That was normally considered probably a consumer app. But they wanted to make sure that all of their folks that are in the field had access to uh, uh, severe weather information. Because these folks that were, they were traveling around the Midwest, as it turns out, were, where there are tornadoes and there are snowstorms, yeah, and, it, tornadoes, and quite often uh, they would be in a position where they wouldn't necessarily uh, know that severe weather was coming unless they had something that tells them it was. And certainly with your tablet, it knows where you are all the time. It's always connected, so it can alert you in real time when uh, there's reason to take cover. And they thought that that was a great addition to the safety uh, for their for their safety, roaming sales uh, force. Here's another productivity suite we put together uh, for one group, and you see it's quite simple. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of uh, uh, paid apps and, and uh, OEM apps. So just stack those things together, and you really got a solution. But they made sure that all their work uh, should get reasonably done while they're mobile. They had to get reasonably done while they're mobile. Some other ones that you may not think of. Uh, Some other ones that breezy is one that we like. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a solution uh, where you can. Um, Print to any any printer on the breezy network within any, uh, within ca printer, any kind of uh, uh, distance whatsoever. So you can print to a local a local uh, a Kinkos or to uh, an office printer down the, down the road uh, to a hotel printer maybe, uh, and that's, that's a great one to add. 
Uh, I thought, told you before that I have a solution for you if you want to get rid of those uh, um, uh, smartphones that people are carrying or their, or their flip phones. Uh, we had one Salesforce put a uh, voice over IP client on their tablet, and uh, with that they were able to have four-digit dialing to the rest of the organization from the tablet uh, using a, a, a Bluetooth headset. And that became their, their deaf phone as well. So it was their, their, their primary phone. And they probably still had cell phones and whatnot uh, for, for their clients. But the, they assumed with the sales force, they already did have some kind of number, some kind of, sales, some kind of uh, cell phone. And that uh, what they really needed was something that can integrate them with the rest of the business. And through voice over IP, they also got uh, presence as part of the package. Here's another one that kind of you know, is one uniquely kind of, mobile by you know, being able to connect you as a salesperson with either technical support or other, other people in the sales force who know about the thing you have a question about. So uh, it's uh, a way of aggregating all of your support documents so I can, before I go into the client, I can read up on this document uh, on this particular product. Or, hey, the client has a product, question about this product, I can go try to find it, and then it also tells me who the experts are on that particular particular issue, um, either because they're they've been tagged as an expert on it, or because they've recently done something that we would suggest that they're an expert in it, like they recently fixed a problem like that. And you can you get a hold of them directly through the app by texting, emailing, or, uh, uh, or, or Twittering them, or I think, I think uh, uh, Skype was the other possibility. So you could, you could reach out to them through any, any one of a number of uh, means and uh, get their response back very, very quickly, almost in real time usually. Uh, and solve that, that client problem. Once again, so, adding to that, that level of response again, that you're able to, to achieve. And the last thing we talk about there as far as building out the solution is uh, how do you get to manage it long term? Do you have a, an MDM or mo you know, a mobile device management solution or a mobile application management solution? Or what we're calling now things like box mobile content management solution. You're having these, these new types of ways of monitoring, managing, impacting, auditing all the things that go on in this mobile environment, very important to being able to automate and uh, maintain good visibility into what goes on with the, with the process. Um, and you know, there's lots of different different reasons for that. All right. Last thing we're going to do in, 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 in creating our solution is our procedure map. So what are the kinds of things we have to put together to understand how we're going to do so when we roll these things out, we have to be able to to do a good job and make sure that we're not surprised by things. These are, these are things that are going to happen that we uh, know we have to have procedures around. Once we've got all that figured out, we've got a 10-step process for actually doing the deployment, and we'll spend our last couple minutes uh, talking about that. Uh, so we've already talked about choosing the segment. Uh, so we already you know, which, which folks are getting them. This, uh, in this instance, probably the sales force for reasons that we know because they're mobile and, and, it, and it's a good thing for them to carry around and they're really doing consumer respond work for the most part. Choosing the apps, we've done that. Choosing a tablet, you know, once you get your, you know, your segment and you know their real requirements and you know the apps they have to run, that's when you really start want to talk about hardware. We've had people start with the hardware and say, well, how am I going to build a solution around this? But the fact of the matter is you really want to have more of your workflow figured out, more of your use case figured out before you start talking about hardware. Once I know what I've got to control and manage now, Once I know now I'm going to come up with that security, now, that now management that solution, security, which includes mobile management, device management, mobile application management, and mobile content management. management. Um, now I'm going to go out and procure those devices. We'll talk now about that in a little bit more detail. Devices, Provisioning and configuration. Quite often, you, um, you don't want to leave it up to the sales force or to any of your end users to, have to configure these devices on their own. They're all built to be configured by end users, so it doesn't have to be something very sophisticated to do it. But chances are, you want to at least start in a place that's very similar, so it's much so much easier to support. So they all have the same apps on them, they have the same version, they're configured the same way, the buttons are laid out the same place. So when that first moment when they open the box, you can get them great. Uh, documentation and also great support because you know exactly what you're looking at. Also great support, you know exactly. Kidding? There's almost always more stuff Kidding. than just the device in the box when you more stuff these things out, the including device. a case. I can't tell you including how important case. that is to have a, a good strong case, case on these devices. Have, uh, and shipping them out and uh, you know maybe porting out, uh, numbers and, uh, or, or services over right. and then having that support. Because as you roll these things out, you'll find you're going to find how these things out, really are, and there's going to be questions, and you need to be able to have good solid answers to those. And and we can predict what those questions are going to be. And we can predict. All right. Now for that kidding, I thought about I thought about things you actually think you're going to put the box. Headsets, if you're going to have people roaming around, uh, you know, rolling in their cars, good chance you're going to want to have some kind of hand-free mode for these devices to use, especially if you have any kind of audio going to and from the device. Great thing to have. Keyboards are falling away, but for a long time it was an important part of the solution. Uh, people still felt, well, 
if, if you're going to try to replace that laptop, yeah, chances are a keyboard that, will make that easier for maybe some of your folks that are less sophisticated or maybe uh, just very used to having keyboards. Uh, barcode scanners for folks that you know, where that's the case. We've uh, done some work in uh, in retail and also in uh, in the auto industry where bin scanners were part were part of the solution. So maybe have, making sure that you've got and a lot of these solutions have uh, 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 cameras on them, so you can take pictures and actually be able to do that stuff as well. Car chargers, I think cases, that's actually the most important one. Uh, you have to put a case in these devices. They are consumer devices. They're not ruggedized for the most part. And you want to make sure that people have the uh, ability to uh, stay, uh, uh, keep working as long as possible and uh, to really knock down how often you got to repair these things, how many screens you're going to have to replace. You're going to want to put in the case. Um, and then you have to collect some information from everybody. Uh, uh, this is a, kind of an, a, a standard uh, so set of information we would collect uh, from uh, a client as we're doing uh, as we're doing the rollout. Uh, I won't go into all these details, but um, I, I will. If you're interested, I will supply the deck to you. And there's a process mapping out that process for how things are going to come in, uh, how we're going to get things configured, how we're going to get all the data laid out, um, how we're going to you know what are the forms we're going to use to keep track of all the data and all, and all the traffic that goes on with the devices and getting them all out to people. Being there for that, that, that first round of help desk, uh, and then being able to, over the long term, being able to support those things as well. The very least, um, you'll need to have this the very least, of information um, to figure these things before they get out to people. Um, this is typically the type of things we would ask for uh, in, in creating a solution. And the thing you got to remember when you're talking about iOS or even Android, you remember when you're devices about iOS aren't made to be globally configured. You do have to touch every last thing, every last one of them. They really are have a consumer interface. They haven't been built for the enterprise. Um, and we, we, we keep getting some you know, solutions that maybe we might someday see a, 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 a ghost type solution for maybe Android. But I think iOS along to is still going to be something we have to touch every last one. So figure that out in your plan. Like how, who's going to be doing all that touching? How long does it take to get this done so, we, so you know what the real cost is going to be of the, of the deployment? Because for, for a lot of folks, we have a deployment center here that does this every day. They're rolling out tens of thousands of devices a, a week. Uh, so for them, they've got a very, lot of great procedures around it and are very, 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 very good at it. And like I said, you want to have that support center uh, that's available you want to have as well. Uh, obviously, here we, we've got great uh, training in all the different types of solutions we have here, including we do custom training on the particular applications that will be part of your solution. A very important part of this is, you know, uh, the people that receive these things won't know the difference between the device and the application set, really. They won't recognize uh, that as being tremendously different one way or the other. Uh, so you'll want to make sure you've, you've covered all of that. All right, well, we are a few minutes past our time. Right, well, we are for that. Um, if you have any questions, if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them in. Uh, once again, we have recorded today's event, so if you'd like to have uh, uh, see that recording, just let us know. If you'd like to have a copy of the deck, uh, we'd be happy to share that with you as well. We do these webinars on a regular basis uh, on a number of topics, uh, tablets, MDM, uh, mobile strategy, uh, BYOD, uh, all, all common topics for us. So if you're really you know, building out your mobility, mobile enterprise program, uh, we'd love to, have, to help you out and talk to you about it and see if we can't uh, uh, partner with you on that a little bit as well. All right. Well, thanks so much. appreciate your time today. Have a great day. Have a great day.